Imagine waking up one day to find out you're a monster. Now let's take a moment to step into the shoes of a man who has lived a life of selflessness for the past nine years. He's the kind of person who would give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. A man who has devoted his life to charity, working tirelessly to bring comfort to those in need. He's become a fixture in his community, a beacon of hope and kindness, someone people can rely on in times of hardship. Every morning he wakes up and sets about his day with a singular purpose, to make the world a better place, one small act of kindness at a time. He volunteers at the local food bank, helps out at the community center, and even lends a hand at the neighborhood school. He's woven himself so tightly into the fabric of his community, it's hard to imagine it without him. He's a humble man, living a simple life, but his impact is anything but small. His actions have touched countless lives, bringing warmth and comfort to those who need it most. He's a living testament to the power of kindness, a shining example of what it means to be a good person. But here's the thing about this man, the pillar of his community and the symbol of generosity. He wasn't always this way. 10 years ago, this man was a different person entirely, a person capable of unthinkable horrors. He spent the last nine years living a life of charity and kindness, but he's also spent them living a lie, a lie that's about to be exposed. For you see, this man, this beacon of hope and kindness, is also a murderer. 10 years ago, he committed an unspeakable act, an act so horrifying that it's hard to reconcile with the man he is today. However, every story has two sides, and his past is a chilling tale of darkness. Beneath the facade of a saint hides a demon from the past. Our tale takes us back 10 years to a night that would forever mar the history of a seemingly ordinary man. A night when the cloak of darkness bore witness to a heinous crime committed within the confines of a home that was meant to be a sanctuary. A man, driven by an inexplicable rage, ended the life of his wife in a fit of violence. The details of the crime are as chilling as they are disturbing. The wife, a symbol of love and care, met a brutal end, beaten to a horrifying death by the hands of the one she trusted the most, her husband. The investigation that followed painted a grim picture. There were signs of struggle, evidence of a desperate fight for survival that ultimately proved futile. The aftermath was as you'd expect. The law enforcement agents, seasoned by years of experience, were taken aback by the gruesome sight that greeted them. The local community was in shock, unable to comprehend the horror that had unfolded in their midst. The man, now a murderer, showed no remorse, no guilt. It was as if he had relinquished his humanity, replaced by a cold, heartless monster. The court proceedings were swift. The evidence was irrefutable, the crime undeniable. The verdict was a foregone conclusion, guilty as charged. A life sentence was handed down, a just punishment for an unthinkable act. But then, a twist of fate. Nine years into his sentence, the man loses his memory. He wakes up one day, an empty shell, his past life a forgotten nightmare. The monster within him, the one responsible for the atrocious act, seemingly vanished, erased from existence. Then, a twist of fate, he loses his memory, erasing the monster within. What if the worst part of you was wiped from your memory? Imagine for a moment, a blank slate, an existence devoid of the burdens of past wrongdoings. This was the reality for our protagonist, a man whose past was as murky as a foggy night. In the aftermath of a brutal incident that left his wife dead, he was dealt another blow, a cruel twist of fate that robbed him of his memory. It was as if the universe, in its infinite wisdom, decided to wash away the stains of his past, leaving him as innocent as a newborn. In this newfound innocence, he was given a second chance at life, a chance to rewrite his story, to turn a new leaf. Oblivious to the monstrous act he'd committed, he embarked on a journey of self-discovery and transformation. From a man lost in the fog of amnesia, he slowly but surely found his footing. He began to make a difference in his community, volunteering his time and energy towards charitable causes. He was the man who'd lend a hand when you needed it, the man who'd offer a comforting shoulder in times of despair. He became a beacon of hope, a testament to the power of second chances. In these nine long years, he forged a new identity, one that was worlds apart from the man he once was. He was no longer the man who'd committed that heinous act. He was a man who had brought light and hope to those around him. 
but there's an old saying that goes, you can't escape your past. No matter how far you run or how much you change, your past has a way of catching up with you. And for our protagonist, the shadows of his forgotten sin were slowly inching closer, ready to shatter the peaceful existence he'd painstakingly built. But the past has a way of catching up. The truth, they say, always comes out. A profound statement that resonates with our story today. After nine years of a life filled with benevolence and goodwill, the past came knocking at his door, shattering the peace he had built around him. The truth of his past was revealed in a way that no one could have ever anticipated. An old case file, gathering dust in the corner of a cold storage room, was stumbled upon during a routine cleanup. The file contained the chilling details of the long-forgotten murder case, the victim, his wife, and the prime suspect, our protagonist. The evidence was undeniable, the connection unmistakable. The shock of this revelation was palpable, sending ripples through the community that had come to know him as a man of kindness and virtue. The man who had spent the better part of a decade selflessly serving others was now being arrested for a crime committed in a past life, a life that he himself could not remember. The court proceedings that followed were nothing short of a spectacle. The prosecutor, armed with stacks of evidence collected over the years, painted a grim picture of the man he once was. The defense, on the other hand, presented a starkly contrasting image of a man who had turned his life around, dedicating himself to service and charity. The courtroom was a battlefield of perceptions. On one side, a man guilty of a heinous crime, and on the other, a man who had been a pillar of his community for the past nine years. The verdict, of course, was in the hands of the judge, who was left to grapple with the decision of a lifetime. In the eyes of the law, he was a criminal, but had he not changed? The question hung heavy in the air, a silent reminder of the complexity of human nature and the moral conundrum that lay at the heart of this case. The story continues, and so does the debate. Is he a good man or a bad man? That, dear listeners, is the question. Is a man defined by his past or his present? This question, profound and disquieting, presents itself at the heart of our tale. A man who, 10 years ago, committed an act so heinous, so unimaginable, that it left an indelible scar on the fabric of society. A man who took the life of his wife, not in a moment of passion, but in a brutal, calculated act of violence. This is the past that haunts him. Yet this same man, for the past nine years, has lived a life of service, of charity. He's been a beacon of hope for many, a living testament to the power of transformation. He has forgotten his past, and in its place, he has constructed a present that is the very antithesis of his former self. This is the present that defines him. The moral dilemma that arises here is a complex one. Is he a good man who once did something terrible, or is he a bad man who's simply forgotten his true nature? His lawyer argues fervently that people can change, that past actions, however monstrous, should not forever cast a man in the shadow of his sins. According to him, our protagonist is a man reborn, a man who has paid his dues to society through his selfless acts of charity and kindness. On the other side of the courtroom, the judge wrestles with the weight of this question. It's not about punishment, but about justice. The judge acknowledges the transformation but is torn between the demands of the law and the moral quandary this case presents. The scales of justice teeter on this fine line of moral ambiguity. Are we to judge a man solely by his past, or do we consider the person he has become? In the end, the question remains, is he a saint or a sinner?